Welcome back to Artemis Radio. This is episode seven. The last episode we talked about sleep and before that headache uh, and then before that was stress and anxiety. But today's episode is very special because I want to know exactly what it's like to be Dr. June for a day. And Dr. June has been practicing for 13 years. Um, And what I love about her is that she is the helicopter approach to health. You know, so she looks at everything in addition to the ailment that you are suffering from and try to figure out little pieces that other people are not trying to do to put it back together again. And that, I think, takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of compassion because the last time I went to the doctor, he saw me for probably, what, two minutes, right? (laughs) Wrote me a prescription and then I was back on that track again and again dealing with my own chronic pain. Um, So we have Dr. June here. (laughs) Thank you, Wendy. (laughs) So tell me, you started your practice 13 years ago. I started my practice because I had chronic pain. Right. So really, I know what it's like when you go to your doctor over and over again and say, this doesn't work. Right. This doesn't work. I tried this. Right. So for me, I made a choice. I said, this is not going to be my legacy. I'm not going to be in chronic pain forever. I'm studying to be a freaking doctor. Yeah. (laughs) Right. There's got to be something. There's got to be something else. And that's why I decided to be an integrative physician, a holistic physician, because it it does take an orchestra to heal. It does take different moving parts. Everyone is different. We don't all work in silos. You don't see the GI doctor when you have a stomach issue, and then you're going to see an endocrinologist when you have the hormone issue. I mean, really, you should have someone that pulls all the purse strings together and is able to integrate it and and work with these moving parts. So I guess my my question to you is, how difficult is it to... No, because for you, you have to almost know everything because you're not you're not specializing in one particular thing. How hard was that to know everything and to be able to pull up and see the helicopter view of that person? No one is going to know everything. Right. And you have to be able to admit it when you don't know everything. But the most important thing is to have an open mind to really figure out, you know, of course, I'm very responsible and I know what the standard of care is. So I'm not going to recommend something that has no basis. But to have an open mind and recommend something that might not be um, accepted in the conventional medical community takes guts. Right. As you know, being a woman shop owner, the the only woman shop owner for CBD in New York, Uh, the only woman (laughs) minority uh, for a CBD shop in New York, this is we're we're working against the grain here. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) No, it's true. And I, I felt like a lot of times when I was walking into a CBD store or a hemp store, it wasn't made for me. Mm. You know, I felt like it was made for it, it. You know, it was just an uncomfortable, mainly because I felt so lost. I didn't understand anything. Um, and it just felt kind of a little bit too dark and damp. And it, it didn't feel airy or open in that sense. And it wasn't intuitive. So when we were doing the store, I, I kept on telling Colin, I was like, you know, we have to make the flow of the store how you would process information. Ah. So, right, so when you walk in the store, the first section you see, we call it our discovery wall, which is like all the ailments that you're looking answers for. We have a curated section for that. And then we walk in a little bit more, and that is, Colin calls it, our method of delivery wall, which is the, all the tinctures, and edibles, that. right? The pens, everything is, is suctioned in that. So as we're continuing the conversation about your health, um, you know, as our customer, we're kind of going through and flowing through what the actual store would, would be like, you know? And I think we've received a lot of positive feedback because it feels very, it's exactly what it is. It's very open. It is what you get. You're not confused when you walk in there. And then we spend a lot of time with our customers as, as most, because I think sometimes just being heard feels empowering. Yes. You know, and, 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 and as a doctor, I'm sure there's people who come to you with serious issues and right. they don't get a, their time when they're with you know maybe other doctors in that sense you know well yeah and it's very intimidating to be able to talk to a stranger about your story right. which you might have said over and over that's again that's right <laughs> so you're like here we go again i'm going to tell the story that's this is right. how it started this is where i ended up so having an open space an open forum where you do feel safe and accepted without judgment right is crucial to the healing process. You're right, 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 right. So for you, like, what was it like seeing your first patient that you knew, hey, cannabis might be the answer? 
honestly, it was really scary. Oh, wow. Because I, I, you know, so cannabis is still a schedule one drug, right? right? So you're doing something that's federally illegal. Right. And here I, I have a medical license. I have a prescription license, a DEA license. So I was really afraid of getting shut down, of someone coming in and taking my license away. It's something I've worked so hard to get through medical school. I've, I've paid so much tuition for medical school. I didn't want it to be pulled from under me. Also, um, being Chinese is a big thing. So for the Chinese culture, for the Asian culture in general, cannabis is a very illicit drug, mm-hmm. right? So you can get the death penalty in China if you I did not know that. <laughs> if you have uh, cannabis on you. I mean, it's very, very strict. And my family is very, very strict. So in my mother's eyes, cannabis is an illicit drug. It destroys families. It threatens society. So for a long time, I didn't tell anyone what I was doing. It must be, you must feel so I alone. Like, I, was, I was very lonely. I was sort of, you're living a double life. I didn't want to tell my colleagues. I was, fa- I, you know, I was afraid of being judged. Um, but I knew this was something that was working for me. And I knew it was something that could work for my patients if, if done safely, if done right. as a partnership. Right, right. And the patients that you see, you're seeing them, like I feel like you have a relationship with them now, right? Because you're probably seeing them continuously going through the process of, of taking cannabis into their lives now. Yes, you're learning together. You're right. learning together. And, and we do have a close relationship. Um, it, it does take a lot of listening. And I think the future is in um, cannabis shops, like CBD shops, like such as yourself. And I had mentioned that in a previous episode because it is an extension of the health and wellness. Um, the doctor might not have all the answers. There might be a more preventative answer. There might be a more integrative answer. And people can get that from a well-curated shop, a well-educated shop such as yourself. Thank you. No, but we we actually, the moment that we opened the shop, we told ourselves, like, we need to build a support network of professionals, medical professionals, too, where... You know, some of these ailments we clearly cannot treat, you know, and, and I don't want them to come in having a false hope that they'll they'll get, you know, this treatment. So when they try a product and it works for them, we're so happy and we're so like, please give us feedback all the time. But if it doesn't work for you, we want that feedback too, you yeah. know. And then if it doesn't work for you, then we have other solutions, professionals that we can refer you to to maybe help with those issues too. So I, I think, again, it, it kind of kind of comes back to this feeling of like, I just want to make sure that their health and their empowerment is like our priority you know it's always humans first before products because in the end i'm trying to think too like how do i treat the current situation but let's prevent it from happening in the future right because that's how you with your chronic back and me with my you know stomach issues like i I don't want to be coming back all the time (laughs) you know and getting the same uh, i i don't know I, i feel like i'm just resistant to every antibiotics now because I'm not getting the same effects anymore. It's like a hamster wheel. Like yeah, you're yeah, yeah. The same cycle. Right, right, but right. But it, it does take a, a village to even heal. Like there's no ego here. Like right. you know, obviously you go to your physician right. for certain things, but there are certain things that you can share with community members that might or might not work through plant-based medicine, and that's okay. Right, 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 that's right. That's okay. Right. Yeah. Well, I do think that the future is in trying to figure out a more curated system for everybody, you know, whether that's pain management, which we get a lot in in the shop, uh, headaches, sleep, uh, anxiety. And we have a few psychiatrists and psychologists have come to the shop too, asking for more information on hemp based medicine, you know, or or cannabis basically. And, and that dialogue I think has been so incredibly fruitful because then we can actually be like, let's figure out, I mean, I'm not, I, so the thing is, I knew when I was growing up, I was not smart enough, <laughs> and I couldn't afford to go I to medical. No, but no, okay. <laughs> I, I, I knew I wasn't smart enough to go to medical school, medical school. That's just not my path, you know. But for you, not only did you do your time in medical school, you have three offices now in New York, right? With all that, like, what do you see as the future of medicine? To be honest with you, when I started my practice in New York, which they legalized medical marijuana four years ago now. Right. Um, my patients were going to vape shops, smoke shops, getting unregulated CBD products. And I had always said, I wish I had a partner, um, an extension, a, um, a, a community where I could refer patients to buy good quality products. It just doesn't exist in New York. 
Wow, I did not know that. Because patients will find, as you know, you're resourceful. Yeah. You're going to go online. You're going to try and figure something out. Maybe you'll purchase something from an online shop. Maybe you'll go to, you walk by and it says CBD sold here. You'll walk in, right? But you don't get great information. And I had to really piggyback back and forth between, okay, that's not a good CBD product. Look at the bottle. Like, it's not even labeled. This, this label is crooked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my god! Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't think about that until you so said that. So I'm really glad we connected because this is what's missing. So you are the first shop. You are the first CBD, premier CBD shop in New York as far as I'm concerned because I've had patients scoured New York yeah. and have not been able to find any resource whatsoever. Yeah. So was this even, was this scary for you to open up and go from fashion, you know, inspiration, <laughs> blogging yeah. to a store <laughs> yeah you know a broke it, brick and mortar store it's, you know, so, it's so funny that you said that because every fashion brand is doing the opposite right they have a brick and mortar store uh-huh. but now they're going online and, oh. and and they're kind of closing down their store and they function mostly online so a lot of new brands are born online if you you okay. probably it's very it's very hard to have a brick and mortar fashion only store so when we were talking about this i i don't I knew it in me that online didn't work for the CBD model, mainly because there's not enough information yep. and there's not a curated, that many curated, or maybe there's maybe one, but honestly not that many curated sites that you can go to that gives you transparency, that gives you an education in addition to products. And because it was so new, I really wanted the human touch where you're coming in and we're, we're spending time. We're not selling you anything. We're spending time. We're just really talking to you about what's going on with you, you know, and trying to find answers. Um, but when we, we went to, so my thing was that I wanted to maybe do a pop-up. I was like, oh, you know, we'll just do a pop-up for a few days and see how it goes. But, you know, you can never measure anything in a short uh, amount of time, you know. So we, we went from maybe doing a pop-up for five days to maybe having a pop-up for a month. And then having a pop up for three months, and it, it turned into you can't measure it's like, you know can't measure anything. So we said let's do it for a year, wow. and then so uh, instead of uh, we put our savings that we had to our getting you know maybe a house or, or an apartment, and we put it in the store, and we just literally put everything in the store, and when we got the lease, we were so ecstatic, and we went through every f- like it, w- it was it was you know there's no shady business, it was real like we got everything we got. Um, we didn't need a cannabis license or a, a dispensary license because we weren't selling anything um, that's cannabis-based in that sense. It's just hemp-based products under 0.3% THC. Um, but we couldn't even get insurance. Like building oh. insurance. Yeah. Well, so, how did you even explain to your landlord that you were going to sell CBD, but it's not it's not marijuana? Exactly. So we explained <laughs> to our landlord and they oh. were fine with it, but they're like, we, you need building insurance, right? right? So we're like, okay, so that must be easy. Everyone gets building insurance. Okay. We got, we couldn't get it. We actually got rejected by, I think, three to four insurance agencies. Wow. And then we got, finally got an, an insurance agency that would be willing to basically give us insurance. And that was about uh, 4X the amount of normal insurance. Oh like my this. gosh. Well, what so, about merchant processing? How do you deal with that oh in terms of God. the cannabis industry and right. CBD industry? So CBD is actually okay for merchant. It's still a high risk business. And high it's still, risk. Yes. Oh, did you know? I'll tell what you a stigma still. Yes, yes, yes. High risk is so funny. Um, did you know that dating sites are high risk too? Yeah. Dating? So what? we fall in the same, same category as a dating site. Yeah. So CBD J-Date, business. J-Date, eHarmony, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's actually a high risk business wow. as well. Wow. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. So we fall in the same kind of category of high risk merchant uh, businesses, and we went through everything. We applied, and uh, basically a few days before we opened, uh, that particular merchant service got shut down, oh. and along with our account. So we couldn't have merchant card in the shop. Um, we're aggressively trying to find it because it's, we know that it's not normal for you to carry cash around, and we don't want to be that business, you know. Um, so we you know basically a few days before we opened we got an atm machine in the shop yeah and colin painted the atm machine <laughs> we wanted to make sure that it like aligned with the vision of the shop so we painted it um but you know in the end we're like this is not how we want to function mm. we want to make sure that it's comfortable um it's kind of crazy but if you go through the shop um there's lots of objects that we put like you know like a little uh you know old camera like i don't know what else like little little itty bitty things in the shop but if you go through the shop is very narrow and it goes through at the end of the shop there's two human figurines that are on seesaw and that is the only human figure that's in the shop 
And it's actually at the very end where the cash register is in that sense because that's where the, oh. the cash register is. Also, we have greenery that looks like it's grown into the store uh, and through the brick buildings. And it's just greenery. But as you keep on going further in where the, kind of the last destination point is, we actually had wildflowers growing on the greenery. So in a sense, quote unquote, life happens at the end of the shop. And we wanted to, f- we wanted to, end the journey with you where it's not like hey get this product whatever happens to you happens to you and you leave and that's it like we wanted to make sure that we provide kind of a a, 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 like just a complete circle when you actually when you end the trip with us how beautiful yeah and that's literally how we designed so every piece of it was you know thought out in that sense so you designed it yourself we did we made everything ourselves uh every uh cement piece we made by hand Uh, we bought 15 minute quick set cement and we did it Uh, we bought you know it was too expensive to buy books like very beautiful books so we thrifted everything on the book side um but every everything we and there's like a little kind of uh, what do you call it like uh easter eggs around Mm -hmm. you know we have uh our theme a lot is, you know, birds because it feels very freeing, empowering, right, in that sense. Yes. So I have, like, bird cages around, but we have these two bird cages. If you go into the shop, there's two little bird cages. One bird is actually still in the cage and the other one escaped. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So that one escaped and it's actually sitting on this board that we have, which is across the, the cement bench. So if you actually sit on the cement bench and actually just look up, there's actually an escaped bird on top of there. I love but, that. Well, we wanted to just, you know, like... Kind of little things that will remind you of a, uh, of a discovery site to discover yourself as you're going through and trying to combat whatever ailment you have, but also just as a feeling of like it's, it's hugging you while you're in the store in that sense. So we wanted to make sure that it's like very welcoming. So what does Artemis mean? How did you come up with the name and the logo? So Artemis is the goddess of the wilderness, goddess of the innocence. Mm-hmm. The protector of the innocence, actually. And uh, we just felt like she was such an empowering figure for us to embrace. Uh, her uh, hero uh, figure is the stag, which is the, the, the logo of Artemis itself, and also cypress trees. So the little two cypress trees that you see in the store is actually her, her, basically cypress trees. That's her. <gasps> um, and we had a stag made, and we were very adamant uh, to our graphic designer that we wanted to incorporate the compound CBD with the stag. So the head of the stag is actually the head of the compound, and the tail of the stag is the antler. I'm sorry, the tail of the compound is the antler of the stag. Wow. Yeah, so we, we wanted to make sure, and all these things, like, I don't think anyone really, you know, like, I, I know no one really cares about it in that sense, but it made us feel like we birthed it in that sense. Like, it's, yes. it's really a part of us. And we, we live there basically most of the day, right? So it has to be comfortable sure. for you to walk into and everything too. But that, that was just, it was very important for us that it, it felt comfortable, it felt empowering, and it felt like you're there because we care about you. Because I know what it feels like to have that situation not happen, you yeah. know? Yeah, But Wonderful. for you, I do have a big question for you. As a woman, as a doctor in the cannabis field, how would you feel i mean are there other women kind of stepping up to participate in this field or is it still such a stigma in the industry that people it's just a hands off right now i would say in the last few years more women have stepped up than ever right so it's really timely um you know the first 10 years probably not <laughs> Right. It was definitely, you know, in general, medicine, in general, science, in general, is a male-dominated uh, industry. Right. But women are really embracing CBD, cannabis, plant care, holistic care, because we are our nourishers. Yeah. We think outside the box. I think that's really in the fabric of our identity. Right. We've always had to be more resourceful, I think, than our male counterparts. Right. And right. we are more open to talking about our issues, right. both health and wellness. So I do see more women um, entering the cannabis and CBD field more than I think any other industry. I think which is really, uh, it's good for all of us because it lifts yep. us up, you know. So I will, I might want to shadow you one of these days. So I would never be a doctor. But walk me through what is a day in the life of your, doc, uh, of, your, of your day. So usually patients will fill out an intake form just like a regular physician visit. Um, When they come in, we take a full history and physical, just like a regular physician visit. And then we look at the things that they've tried that hasn't Mm -hmm. worked. And we look at the things that they've tried and has worked. 
and we try, try and basically pull all those things together. Um, integrating medical cannabis, it could be exercise, nutrition, um, it could be osteopathy. Um, so we really try and take a holistic approach and really leave no stone unturned. Do you do you it do you see that it's usually the patients who are coming in or is it families coming in to see you? So usually um, if a parent comes in for their child and it works or if a mom or a dad comes in and it works, then they bring their extended family. Oh, really? So I end up treating generations. Mm-hmm. I did not know that. Yeah. yeah so so you actually watch them yeah. grow in, in that yeah. sense. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. So my patients in Orange County, back in California, um, you know, I've treated like grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, child, and then the child's newborn. Right? I, I so have never... That it's is incredible. Very rewarding. I bet. So how long how long do you spend time with, with your patients? Oh, the visits are at least an hour. Ma- the that, visits are okay. at least an you hour. You guys, you guys don't have to understand that's okay. <laughs> that is unheard of, honestly. Yeah. I mean, just for, even for the listeners out there, like remember the last time you went to the doctor and how long was that? You know what was an hour? The waiting. Yeah. <laughs> right? right? The waiting is the hour and then you get in there and it's, it's about like five minutes. So you spend an hour with, with your patients usually? Yes. Yes. Because we go through nutrition. We go through everything. We go through everything. And then you probably have to follow up later. Yes. And we follow up. The follow-ups maybe are about a half an hour. I mean, sometimes they, they can take longer. But at least 30 minutes is the minimum. Mm-hmm. Oh, my yeah. gosh. That is incredible. Um, I don't know what to say. No, it's because it doesn't happen usually. You know, it doesn't happen when you're just trying to seek for answers. It, it just does not happen that way, you know. Um, but, I mean, you've been practicing for over 13 years. You're New York based now, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Do you get clients or patients that fly in to see you as well? I do. I do. I get patients, I mean, from the Middle East that come in. Yeah. From, from London, from Europe, that come in, Canada, um, really all over. Sometimes I'll do telemedicine visits, which is uh, video. Right. Um, so if they can't travel, um, I had a woman from Spain call me last week. So we just did a little video visit, um, which is fine as and well. And they, sh- they basically show you all of the medication that they've been using. Yeah, and so everything. they fill out the forms. They, show, they, they still you know, fax me their blood results okay. or their pathology records, and I still look at everything. But the video is done virtually. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. So, Dr. Chen, uh, Dr. June, June Chen, but Dr. June, I won't do that again. Okay. So, Dr. June spends about, you know, an hour to three hours with us recording. And this is time out of her day that she can be seeing patients. So, I want to let you know how grateful I am that you're sitting here. And I'm sure the listeners are so incredibly thrilled that you have this incredible heart that you can spend. And, and, you know, and this is resources that are for all of us, right? And these are the things that we care about, which is sleep and, you know, stress and everything else too. And just your expertise in this has been incredibly enlightening. So I just want to let you know that. Thank you for being Thank here. You. Thank no, you. Seriously, thank you for being here. Again, we are all in this together. Right. We're partners in health. Um, so it does take a village. And if we keep the communication open, education is key. Standard is key. I think we'll all do a lot better as a society. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Dr. June, for being here. This is incredible. Um, And we will see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.